Okay, today I'm going to do a little bit different video than usual. Today my video is going to be on endocannabinoid deficiency syndrome. Okay, um, if you don't know what the endocannabinoid system is, I encourage you to research it. But go ahead and listen even if you don't. Okay, in the 1990, or in 1990, Miles Heckerham discovered the endocannabinoid system, ECS. A neuromodulatory system, our body makes its own cannabinoids, called endocannabinoids, which the ECS uses to several vital processes, pain, appetite, sleep, inflammation, metabolism, cellular life, death cycles, and assuring homostasis. All mammals have ECS. In 1991, Dr. Raphael Michalm identified the first known endocannabinoid cannabinoid andamide, which he names after Sanskrit word anada, meaning blissful. He discovered andamide after cloning an ECS receptor site, CB1, which indicated that there was a substance within our bodies that attached to the receptor site. The cloning of another receptor site a few years later, CB2, led to a discovery of 2 archaeogeroso 2 ag another endocannabinoid. These two receptor sites are located on the cell surfaces throughout the human body. CB1 receptors appear more prevalently in vital organs, including the brain. CB2 receptors are primarily found in peripheral cells and in our immune system. Endocannabinoids are found naturally in human breast milk and are thought to be present in order to establish healthy bodily processes like a robust immune system, regular sleep cycles, a normal appetite, and a healthy metabolism. While we receive our mother's endocannabinoids as we are breastfed and our bodies make their own cannabinoids, our bodies do not store them in any reserve, resulting in an inactivity when not supplemented. This inactivity eventually results in a deficiency Refer to Clinical Endocannabinoid Deficiency Syndrome, CEDS. CEDS was first proposed by Dr. Ethan Russell in 2004, and according to a growing body of scientific evidence, may be the underlying cause of a droided illness along with inflammatory and autoimmune diseases. Even depression, PTSD, bone loss, diabetes, acute or chronic pain, and cancer, in fact, an overactive ECS may be the root of obesity in many individuals. Is it possible that such a wide spectrum of illnesses could be attributed to a deficiency in cannabinoids? Research suggests so. Because ECS regulates homostasis, its implication in a variety of disease and disorders in the body is highly plausible. While our bodies make our own cannabinoids, cannabinoids from plants affect the ECS as well. Plant-based cannabinoids, or photocannabinoids, bind into the ECS receptors in the same way that endocannabinoids do. Photocannabinoids, like those found in cannabis, have been shown in clinical settings to have anti-inflammatory, anti-anxiety, antioxidant effects. Although research is ongoing, photocannabinoids may therefore help balance ECS, meditating both overactive and underactive ECS activity. For people who have CEDS, photocannabinoids may in fact be essential nutrients. For otherwise healthy people, cannabinoid supplementation may be a powerful prevention measure against disease. Other compounds like essential fatty acids are also known to modulate the ECS, indicating that the endocannabinoid system is far more important to our health and longevity than previously thought. Okay, so... If you guys never heard about the endocannabinoid system, then you realize what the government is hiding. This is an actual system in every human being, in every animal. And schools have never taught anybody of the endocannabinoid system. The endocannabinoid system is responsible for modulating healthy cells and modulating metabolite intake. So... If uh, you have a healthy ECS, you will most likely not come to get a disease or cancer. Almost every disease and cancer caused by modern day can be associated with deficiencies in cannabinoids. More research is needed, of course, to more understand this, because every cannabinoid has different benefits for the human. Right now, the two most studi studied cannabinoids, THC and CBD, have been used for a large array of different illnesses. 
Um, come back next time for a new video, and I will release more.